Well, welcome back to the shop, gentlemen. And as you can see, spring continues to bestow its bounty of old crap upon me. Now, uh, the neighbor lads brought over their disassembled uh, hockey rink. I guess the death knell for the hockey rink was the frozen puck through the grass window. So, unfortunately, the lads can't play hockey in their backyard anymore, but I got the old lumber. Well, with the lumber being left over fall, winter, and spring, and being out in the elements twisted up like a pretzel, of course, it's not conducive to making anything decent, so I go ahead and buck it up and make dunnage out of it. I mean, it makes perfect blocks, and I've been looking for some wood to make a support for my great-grandfather's anvil. Now, this is an anvil that comes from a time when uh, you had to be self-sufficient. You couldn't just call somebody to fix your gear for you. You had to do it yourself. So I'm going to think about this and do a real nice job. So the base is pretty skookin' there. i got about 40 pounds of British Columbia's finest spruce. Unfortunately, it's four-point contact, and uh, she's got a little, little bit of a speed wobble to her. I'm going to go ahead and fix that, and then I'm going to contrive a way to keep this horn uh, connected to the base somehow. Just going to slice off the bottom brackets here. Just a blonde one shy of 11. I'm using the dry cut saw. I like to use a little rapid top because these blades are 100 bucks a piece and once you chatter up one of the carbides it's, you got to send it out. I like it because it doesn't shoot uh, sparks everywhere like the abrasive. It is just as noisy and obnoxious but it makes a hell of a nice cut too. just doing some 30 degree cosmetic bevels and this is where your little scraps of plywood come in handy. Now another thing about this saw I didn't mention was you got to have it on a 20 amp breaker otherwise you'd be pulling your hair, well what, what hair you have left, clean out of your head. And the bridge port's a little out of tram so I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes manually. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time you know that safety is my game. I make sure to uh, deburr all the edges so nobody cuts their little fingies. And also, I hate painting, so that helps the paint uh, not break at the corner. It helps it adhere. Okay, I got the brackets outside all painted. They're just uh, flashing off there. And now I've built up a dam with some aluminum tape and put some silicon carney down the middle so that my urethane rubber that I'm going to cast in there doesn't uh, squeak out the sides. I got it all leveled off. Well. Leveled enough for the girls I go out with. Now we're going to use this smooth on. Now I like smooth on better than Alumacast because in small quantities uh, it's cheaper, it's easier to get here in Canada. Uh, this is PMC 790 industrial liquid rubber. The 90 is the shore hardness, so it's real stiff, and 7 is the chooch factor. We're just going to flavor the taste with some black tint. Again from smooth on. Now this kit's going to cost you about 40 bucks, which, uh, oh god, <clears throat> which ain't cheap. And these bottles weld themselves together. That's a, that's a two to one mix. So we go one part B, 12 ounces. We're going to go to 36 ounces. Well, it seems expensive, but remember, urethane is forever. And I kind of did it the wrong way. Uh, it's better if you do part A. That's why it's called part A first, because it's thicker. This doesn't have an indefinite pot life. Of course, I haven't read the instructions, so I don't know how long it'll last in the pot, but it is time sensitive. Okay, 36 ounces. Now we got to mix the hell out of this. I had a buddy that was a shipwright doing fiberglass ships and all sorts of stuff. And the, told me the trick with paint or any kind of gel coat, fiberglass, is you mix it until you know it's mixed and then you mix it some more and you're guaranteed you're going to get a good result. This is not a guarantee. Okay, we got our all mixed up now because this is going to be an open pour. Uh, we don't really need to degas it because we could sit here for a couple hours and just poke bubbles, but since we got it, we're going to run it. Now, this thing I picked up... Uh, I showed it in an earlier video, but I just picked this up 
from the Sally Ann and it's a pressure cooker and I bought a cheap vacuum pump online and it didn't work. It was dead on arrival. Did you hear that compressor kicked on? Now this takes a lot of air. So I like to turn off the Venturi while the air builds up. So 25 inches of mercury below is about all we're going to get out of this Venturi. So I just like to watch it as the bubbles come out of the urethane, the pressure will go up. All right, I got to breeze through this here. This isn't P1 for me, and I got uh, I got a helper now, so uh, I I kind of got to take care of priority one rather than uh, priority 18 over here. But uh, I got $35 worth of with the urethane chuchin in there and I don't want to waste it but I am not going to run the Venturi anymore. The vacuum's leveled off so it should be done gassing and this and this has a pot life of uh, 20 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and pour. And you can see there's lots of bubbles there and trained in the very top of it so the way they want you to pour is one side of the mold and let it flow over to the other. So I got a feeling we're going to have some little mermaids staring us in the face after this chuches but uh, as I said I got other priorities at the moment. And gentlemen, I'm sorry to say, for the duration of this video, there will be a moratorium on cussing. Little pictures and whatnot. Okay, chickadee, you ready to put Papa's anvil on? You just hold my hernia. Oh, God. While we got the little one in a good mood, you're going to want to grab your $200 snap-on o-ring pick and go ahead and pop all the little bubbles. I seem to recall a little trick for getting rid of surface bubbles is spraying mold release on there. So we're going to give her a try. Chickadee, close your lungs. We got a little bit of urethane making a break for it. Starting to stiffen up here, so I think I'm just gonna have to live with the bubbles. So today is tomorrow, and the urethane's all set up. It's skookum as a prig. I mean, industrial rubber it'll last you a lifetime in the shop. Now, this is where my wife parks her car, and obviously she doesn't want a saddle horn at her rear end, so I'm going to use these. Yeah, dirty mind. I'm gonna use these concrete anchors so that I can bolt this down and then when it's not in use, I just unbolt it. And that's what I do with all the bigger gear that needs to be bolted down. I normally have it mobile and then just bolt it onto these right heads. Now for drilling holes in concrete, we use percussive drilling. And percussive drilling is one of the few things on the entire planet that I actually know something about. Now what's happening here is we're using an impact to break a small chip. Uh, now concrete is very strong in compression, but it's very weak in tension. And it's quite brittle as well. We're taking advantage of that fact by using a percussive drill bit. Now this drill bit has a bit of a carbide spade on it. So what happens is we have an impact and then we rotate a tiny bit impact again so that we're just breaking a little piece off each time and for production drilling you want uh, flushing uh, either air or water flushing to get the cuttings out of the hole now with the uh, I was just cutting at home we're just going to rely on the flutes to flush the hole and that's why we also need the rotation. It's not the best way to flush the hole but it works for small holes. Now if you're like me, the first couple times that you go to put these dead heads, uh, red heads in rather, you're gonna grab your hammer drill and say to yourself, well hell I got a hammer drill, I'll be able to drill some nice holes in this concrete, that's what it's for. Wrong. If you use this for larger size red heads, it's it is not going to work to your liking. Your holes are going to be wandering all over the place. You're going to be beating the hell out of your drill and beating the hell out of yourself. And you're not going to get the hole. <laughs> it's going to take you forever. It's, it's just a royal pain in the ass. So if you're anything like me, maybe you're going to try your hammer drill on three separate occasions and each time it's going to let you down. 
uh, your holes aren't going to be in the right spot and you're going to look like an asshole. So do yourself a favor, you do not want a hammer drill because it doesn't have the percussive force required to break the chip. What you want is a rotary hammer. You can rent one of these for 20 bucks. It's going to save you a ton of headache. And when you start the hole, the most important part of percussive drilling is collaring the hole. Collaring is basically just giving yourself a little pilot hole. So we want to go easy until we get the hole down about uh, half an inch, an inch. That's going to make sure that our, our drill bit doesn't wander. So we give her about half percussion. Now that we got her down, we can we can give her balls. And as you can see, I need a new drill bit because this one's gone a little daddy wampus on me. But uh, I'm gonna run with a brum. So the other thing that you need to consider is when you hit a hard stone, your hammer drill is gonna not gonna want to go through it because it doesn't have enough impact to break that stone chip off. So you're just gonna be idling away, uh, maybe deviate if you're lucky, just be fighting it. So hammer drill, it's the way to go. Don't do what Donnie Don't does and try it three or four times and uh, get the same result with the hammer drill. Just go straight to the rotary hammer. We're just going to use a little tap water here to uh, contain the dust. You can get tap water at any machining store. You use it on uh, taps for threading holes in, in steel. Now when you really give her beans on these, they do pull out, so I like to give myself a fighting chance. Use construction adhesive. This stuff is uh, LePage Premium. 3X Stronger Plus for it. That's what we're looking for. Nice and tight. You can hear when it goes solid, we're good. We jam the wedge down. Got the concrete all nicely drilled and the anchors in. She's looking pretty good, but only one way to really find out.